Hello, I am Diego Lucereso from the OpenShift Online team and uh, I am going to create this small video just to show you how I set up my Windows machine to work with OpenShift Online. I also use this video to show some of the participants on the Global Game Jam 2016 on how to use OpenShift Online to host their video games. Uh, this was after a small series of presentations at the Georgia State University on uh, Game Development 101. So, let's get to it. Of course, the best place to start is at OpenShift.com. Here you can check all the features that may interest you in creating applications with OpenShift. For this video, one of the most interesting things that we can do is to go to the menu and uh, go to the developers. Here you can go to the getting started link that we're going to check at some point to the developer portal and documentation. This is real important if it's your first time that uh, you visit uh, OpenShift. The other thing here that you can do directly at OpenShift.com is to sign up for your free account at OpenShift Online and of course log into your account. When you log into your account, this is a personal one that I created just for this, you can also check your applications and when you go to help, you can also go to the developer portal and the documentation. Of course, you can go directly to developers.openshift.com and you are going to find the get started link. Here you are going to find the documentation that you're going to need to install all the requirements for OpenShift to work on your local machine and you're going to have a link for each one of the different operating systems so you have to see well Windows, Mac, Fedora. For this video we're going to pick Windows. In this page you're going to find all the steps that you're going to need to get your Windows machine working with OpenShift. First, you are going to have to install all the client tools on Windows, including Ruby, Git, and RHC to work directly with uh, OpenShift. So, let's start installing Ruby. To do so, you can just follow the link. Obviously, it's going to open another tab on your browser, and you just try to find the latest version that you have here. I'm going to go for this one. And also, well, you can read a little bit of documentation in case that you're curious about that. Perhaps you already use this in your own developments. So here it is, the installer. It's going to take a little bit. I'm going to go back to the steps that we need to follow and you see that we already have a, another version that is newer than what is needed. Now that it downloaded we can start the installation process, pick your language and then we can accept the license to follow all the steps that we can see here on the tutorial. Please pay attention to the note that is added in the steps. It tells you that it's mandatory that you select the Add Ruby Executables to your path checkbox in order to run Ruby from the command line. So you can see it here in the image and we're going to do exactly that. Now you can see that your installation process has started. It may take a couple of seconds. And here we go. We finish our Ruby installation. Make certain that we install everything correctly, we're going to run the command prompt and then we're going to go to the root, Z, and after that we're going to type the command that we see here, ruby minus v. There we go. And we should have a similar result to what we see here in our instructions. So you see, you see the version of what is installed and uh, we have a different version but that's just basically the same thing so we can know that installation went okay now 
If you don't see the message with the Ruby version, perhaps you should pay attention to this last paragraph that is telling you what to do to fix it. You see here that you have to add the executables to your path. After this is done, we should go to the next step that is install git. In this case, we're going to go for git for Windows. We have the link here. And we're going to download the installer. Now, uh, let's take into account this node that we see here. And this is going to be important to, uh, well, install git. Now we just go to the installer, double click, and we're going to follow the normal steps taken into consideration the node that I just mentioned. Of course, we just click here. We're going to move here just to make certain that we're checking everything that we need to check. So check Windows style, commit Unix style endings, and quick launch on the desktop. I also want it there. Next. And Pretty much this process is going to be uh, here is where we need to really to consider this. So obviously we follow the advice that we receive. After that we can just say next. And We have the different options. It's already set. In this case, we can also pick the default console by Windows. And that's what I'm going to do. And you can also decide if you're going to catch your file systems. So after that, we just accept everything, pretty much. Let the installer do its job. And then we're going to make certain that all the steps, or everything that is included in this step, is finished. And then we're going to be able to configure the OpenShift gem that you can see right there that is step number three. I know that it takes a little bit to, uh, to install everything but fortunately well it's just the first time and I wanted to leave this in the video just so you have an idea of everything that I did, everything that I included um, uh, on my preparation work for this machine, and, and then you can basically compare. Uh, there are some steps that you can fast forward and you just can follow the uh, steps that you have in directly in the developers page, but I wanted to add it all there. And it seems that we are finished. Well, it's opening the release notes. You can check them if you need to. Bad, we're going to go back here to our steps. And what we're going to do is to look for the command prompt. In this case, I'm going to run it as an administrator. Um, here we go. Going back to the root. And at that point, I can basically just uh, paste, copy paste this 
git command and we're going to be able to see the version and you're going to be able to compare with what we have in our steps and figure out that well the installation went correct in this case you you can tell that the version is different but uh well they are updating constantly so that's not going to be a surprise after this we're going to go for step number three so install and configure the OpenShift gem since we already installed Ruby, we can use the Ruby gems package that is included in Ruby to install the OpenShift client tools. Now, you can tell that the only thing that we have to do is to execute this command that we can copy paste from here. So, gem install RHC. So, well, that's basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to paste it here. Uh, quite likely it's going to ask me some sort of permission there you go so I'm going to allow access and then the process is going to start to show you and it may take a little bit we're going to allow the process to go and you're going to be able to see all the messages that we received during the process At this point, the installation should be done and we should be ready to go. Uh, also, here at the bottom of the instructions, you can see this video by Nick Harvey that is going to show you basically uh, the, the entire process, in, like in around four minutes. And it's quite interesting because, well, it's going to get you ready in case that you forget some of the steps. You can just go back and check it quickly there. After all the tools have been installed correctly, uh, you just have to do an RHC setup. You see the command here. You just have to copy that into your command prompt and execute. Now, I did try to do that on my Windows machine. You can see it here, and it had an error. So at this point, uh, the setup is just supposed to ask you for your login and password in OpenShift Online. But I was getting this error, so the, I did the logical thing and tried to look online to see what, what was going to be the solution for that. Basically, the first thing that I found was this entry in a Stack Overflow, and it explains quite in detail what happened. But the reality is that you just have to copy-paste this uh, install and execute it. And after that, you can continue the process correctly, like without any problem. So, well, let's do that. So, let's paste then to install the gem. It's going to take a couple of seconds. And fetch, parsing, and installing. And there you go. Now it is. Now, since that is solved, I should try again the setup, right? So, here we go. At this point, you can just hit enter to uh, use OpenShift Online and continue. So let's go back to the steps. You see that it, that's basically the next step. It's going to ask you for your uh, user and password. So let's do that. So I hit enter. I'm not going to set up uh, my own server right now. I'm going to use just uh, OpenShift Server, well, OpenShift Online server. And there you go, it's going to ask me my login. So let's enter that. And my password, that of course I'm not going to tell you what that is. You are then prompted to generate an authorization token. So at that point you can just say yes is going to authorize that and then you are going to well obviously check uh, what that is about you can check the details here so this is where the key should be created 
this case is going to tell me that uh, and should upload the uh, key so I'm going to say yes it's going to ask me for a name for the key and I'm just going to press enter and that's going to be pretty much it now let's compare with our steps this is basically what we should have at the end and that's similar to what we have I see that in my case I already had configure one domain so that was going to be the next step that it was going to tell me like hey uh, you need a domain you can name it whatever you want in my case I already had something else but it's already telling me that my client has been configured so that's that's really good so at this point uh, you should be able to create and manage uh, applications using OpenShift and uh, the wizard should also show you some of the options that you have and well if not you can see them here in the portal and you can create your own application or you can do something like Node.js, PHP, etc, etc. So you just can copy those comments here in the comment prompt and uh, you should be able to, to do that. In the following video, quite likely, we're going to see how to create our first uh, OpenShift Online application, or at the very least, how to host a video game that was the original purpose of this series of videos. I hope that you like the video, this, the entire series, and that you give me some of your feedback. So, have a great day.